Okay, it's a little bit more casual now. I can kind of go through some of these cards here. So we got the Stars and Service card for Roberto Clemente. And this is for uh, basically his humanitarian efforts uh, for which the award in National League, Major League Baseball is actually named after him. So, uh, you know, kind of a nice card. Uh, commemorating his um, legacy in baseball. Uh, we got the die cut for Brooks Robinson, Baltimore Orioles, Platinum Players. Uh, first up quickness, lateral range and pump point three because he made him the paradigm of hot corner defense. The 16 career fielding awards won in succession beginning in the 1960 remaining record for non-pitchers named to the MLB All-Star Game every year from 60 to 75. So that's what, 16 seasons? Uh, compiled 39.1 defensive war to rank third all-time in any position. He was in Shrine in Cooperstown in 83. I wonder what his offensive war was. Jeez, that's a good defensive war. Wow. I don't think, not that they trapped this kind of stats back then, but they could definitely tell the player was, uh, you know, uh, good defensively and helping wins. Uh, the Ichiro Suzuki rookie card. So I'm assuming this is what the actual rookie card looked like. The back here, I'm not sure I doubt that's what was on the actual back of the card. Although, who knows? They most likely would add stats, you would think, but anyway, it's a reprint, so just a nice looking card there. Uh, Steven Strasburg tops through the years. So, I guess this is just in commemoration of various cards. I'm assuming that they've maybe got one, like for Steven Strasburg here, one for every year that you can ultimately collect. Uh, let's see what it says here. Uh, Bowman based prospect card before it was purchased by Tops in 1956. Bowman produced many cards that uh, remain favorites for French collectors. The 51 Mickey Mantle rookie card, and uh, Mick Wild, the 54 Ted Williams is another all timer. In 2010, Steven Strasburg continued the more recent tradition of highly coveted Bowman rookie cards. All right, well, there you go. That's that. Um, history of Tops. So this is just, a, I guess, just commemorating when they introduced the Tops Now cards, which are kind of like those on-demand cards that they print whenever something big happens throughout the season. Better time than now. Uh, for, the, for collectors, lag time disappeared in 2016. The cutting edge Tops Now part out the loud hobbyists to get a piece of the greatest moments in sports and entertainment as they happen. Cards are available on Tops.com for 24 hours. It's just a commercial for Tops Now. I mean... If you're not familiar with it, uh, just Google it. All right, so here's um, another through the years, but this is a signed one, but I can't tell if this is an authentic signing. It says Topps Certified Autograph Issue. I'm not sure what that means. Topps Certified Autograph Issue. So I'm assuming that means that these are legit um, um, signings. You know what, I think it is actually. I think this autograph was on the original card. The original card was a top certified, and this is just a replica of it. So I don't think this is truly a signed card. Top diamond icon brand, uh, icons brand gives collectors an opportunity to pull anything from autograph cleats to the, uh, the, 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 the front of this card is a reproduction of a historic top baseball card. It does not contain an original autograph. There you go, so it's done right there. I didn't think it was, and it was not. But this one is. So this is uh, Isaac Paredes for the Detroit Tigers rookie card. Not sure how the how highly titled this guy is, but something to keep in a special way because if they're criticizing or something, that's a card that could work quite a bit. Cody Bellinger, this is the gold parallel. And we got one. Um, numbered 1219 out of 2021. So I guess I'll probably have to, might have, might have to buy some more um, Tins or blaster boxes this year in order to, to kind of fill out the fill out range out a little bit, um, and maybe even to complete my set, unless I can trade for it. Uh, the Louis Robert, Robert box topper, I think this one's actually really really cool. I couldn't imagine myself trading this. I'll have to find a special. Um, this one with the card store. I'll have to find a special uh, container for this one, but uh, I think that's really cool. Here we have this Juan Soto Nationals card. I'm not sure what to make of this one, except that I think it might be the white parallel insert. Um, let's see what it says in the back here. 
Uh, Stephen Strasburg's electric fine debut in June prompted Tufts to expand its original 660 card set in 2010 to 661 uh, via the Million Card Giveaway website. The first flagship product to be produced following an exclusive agreement between Tufts and MLB. The set led off with defending NL RBA champ Prince Fielder, followed by Buster Posey's rookie card at number two. I don't know what any of that has to do with this card. So I don't believe this is the white parallel. I'm just entirely uncertain what this card's even about because it doesn't have any information about one Soto on the back. So, unusual. We'll just sit that one over here and try and figure out what that's about. Uh, the Home Run Challenge card. Um, I mean, it's straightforward. It's, uh, you know, you scratch off the back. Uh, you can enter in when you think they're going to hit a home run. If they get it, you um, register for the challenge and choose the game that you think is probably a home run. If he does, you will win a prize. All challenge. Okay, I think you just get like a card, probably one of those Tufts Now cards or something. But uh, I like these cards, and I figure if, if, if I don't scratch them off, then uh, you know, maybe they'll hold some kind of value in the future. And they look kind of nice in the front, too. Okay, here's our relics. So we got the Twins, Miguel Sano. Um, can't get that to clean up. Uh, it's a player, a player warm memorabilia, memorabilia card. And then on the back, uh, the well, second card is the Nolan Arenado <clears throat> rookies, Rockies. <laughs> MLB Spring Training. Um, and this is a commemorative cap logo patch. So I'm not exactly sure if this is game worn. You see the spring training the um, cap low patch from Tops 21. I mean it could be or it could be not be, I don't really care. I the remember memorabilia Billy cards are kinda neat. Uh, here we got some of these rookie ones that we were looking for. Didn't get that uh Tyler Torkinson one that we were really hoping for, but nonetheless we did get uh, the Alec Boom rookie card. That was a big deal we were looking for. We also got it over here too. The um in the chrome so that's a uh, pretty exciting a uh, couple of cards to get there uh, we got the joe adele rookie card from the angels uh the nate person rookie card for the blue jays joey bart for the giants this one i think is the big one for the year um tony gonsolin for the dodgers i don't remember him having a rookie card last year i thought it could be wrong it's a fan of my i think it might be wrong now that i'm thinking about it but i think that's a card people are looking for him i'm not entirely sure Louis Robert, I just pulled it aside because I think he's a special player. His rookie card came out last year, but this is still uh, a neat card uh, for any for any collector in the future. Um, over here we got some of these neat ones. So here we've got the Phillies Alec Baum, uh, blue parallel rookie card. Um, it's really thick compared to the other cards. Which I can't quite figure out why that is. I mean, maybe it's just to protect it or something. It doesn't appear to be a memor memorabilia card. There's no autograph. Nothing like that. It is numbered 106 out of 150. So its thickness is a little... It's not two cards stuck together. So it's a little puzzling as to why. But And then we got the um, Clayton Kershaw. Let's just look at the back. First of all. Uh, so he did play with the Phillies last season. Luckily he played 44 games actually. Uh, 23 RBIs, 4 home runs, hit 338 though, that's weird. So 338 average and 168 bats produced 23 runs, or RBIs. So in regular season, what would that be? 160, 320, 640, 23, 46, 92, 92 RBIs, for the same runs, uh, 4 out of 16 home runs. That, I mean, certainly looks like a really, really solid player. You know, high, probably it looks like a high average kind of guy. High batting average, I mean. Uh, Clayton Kershaw, I don't need to say anything. Everybody knows about, about this guy. He's a superstar of, super, of, of the superstars. Already had 2,500 strikeouts. Probably the only person that could ever come close to challenging uh, Nolan Ryan, but I don't think he will because he won't get the innings in and he'll get older. Uh, Louis Garcia for the Nationals. Uh, Monty Harrison for the Marlins. Josh Donaldson for the Twins. Keeps on chugging along. Um, yeah, the shortened season is so hard. until he played half the shortened season. But, you know, the team with the Braves, he put up a, a, a type of season he used to have with the Jays back in the day. So, it looks like he might still have it. Who knows? 
Uh, you get the Boba Shet here, one of my favorite player. Uh, for the Bougies, and everybody's always like, Bo, um, talking about Vlad, 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 but I think Bo is the, um, is going to be the heart of the heartbeat of this franchise mm -hmm. between his offense and his defense. Uh, Rocky's Trevor Story. Uh, Shane Bieber for the Indians. That's a nice one to get to there. Sean Bieber is a pretty special player. This is only his third season, third full season. So he's got a lot of career left to go. And then, of course, the Mookie Betts screen parallel. Uh, the numbered, yeah, four fifty one out of four ninety nine. Right, so we got a bunch of neat cards there. Uh, yeah, I think um, but I think that uh, Boba is going to be the heartbeat of this whole team. And now with Springer coming in and uh, all these other guys, it's going to be something special. Here's my one of my personal favorites from the set, Chris Bryant. Not that it's Chris Bryant, I couldn't tell us about him, but the card itself. Uh, it's very symbolic. It takes me back to my childhood, running down. Uh, up the street, actually, towards Main Street, and to this small town I lived in, to go to the Stedman's, which was the local, it's almost like a gigantic convenience store, kind of like, I guess it's like a small version of Walmart, and buying my baseball cards up there. Uh, Top ushered in a new decade with the pizzazz in its 1990s set. Each player was framed with gradient colors to uh, transition from dark to light. With the corners featuring their own hue, the 790 count checklist opened with five Nolan Ryan cards. I got all five of them upstairs. Celebrating his 5,000th career strikeout, achieving the previous August, Frank Thomas rookie entry is another favorite. Got that one too. Also got the Frank Thomas and uh, Bowman, but they're all worthless because those cards weren't worth anything back in those days. But it is funny. I remember that those uh, back in those days, the cards uh, were like 800 cards in a box, and I was surprised when I came back to collecting last year to see that most of the new sets only had like 600 to 650, um, no, 600 to 650 cards. Despite the fact that there's uh, probably more teams than there was in 1990. So, uh, it was just uh, interesting. And uh, here's the Anthony Rizzo Chicago Cubs. This is a throwback to uh, the 1961 set. So, a neat looking card, right? And then we got Jason DeGrom here, and I think this is the 73. I looked it up before quickly. Yeah, so this is a throwback to the 1973 edition. Yeah, so I guess it says here they dropped about to 660 cards back then, too. So I guess it just depends on the year. Like some, some years they might decide to open up the set and take in more uh, players, and I guess some years they just they dropped the card number set back and, and only you know, display maybe some of the more high-profile uh, players, maybe kind of more everyday kind of people you see at the diamond. The 85 throwbacks. I think there's 85s. Does it say anything on here about it? Uh... No, just good. It does have the career records: two eighty-seven batting average, five hundred and four home runs, uh, nineteen hundred RBIs, and sixteen hundred runs. You know, I'm sure he's in the Hall of Fame. He's got to be. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., who's an obviously exciting up-and-coming player here. Uh, we'll see how things turn out there, but it looks like the future is bright. Andres Jimenez, rookie card. Uh, not sure what to say there. Yeah, yeah it's up and coming rookie here anyway. Shohei Itani, who I personally love because, um, you know, pitches and hits. Um, hits really well. Obviously, he gets the home runs, um, despite having very few at-bats. Gets a lot of home runs, a lot of RBIs, a lot of runs. Uh, good batting average. So, obviously, the last season was a drop-off, but <clears throat> I'm sure there's probably a reason for that. Probably some kind of injury or something. Or just the fact that it was a shortened season may just be a, a bad sample selection out of what would have um, been just a small sample size from a regular season. But nonetheless, um, not the greatest uh, season in 190. So that's seven home, seven home runs, though. And uh, obviously his big thing is pitching anyways. So uh, I guess yeah, I guess you have to, for him, they put out like a, probably a hitting card for him and a pitching card. Interesting. Let's see how that turns out. Uh, Casey Mize, rookie card. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton. Nolan Ryan, you know, one of, the, one of the gods of pitching here. 5,714 strikeouts. I mean, what's his face there? We were looking at a minute ago. Sure, Kershaw. I mean, he's, he's like maybe half that way, and uh, he's almost definitely way past half his point, halfway point in his career. And Nolan Ryan pitched for, it doesn't show seasons on here. That just shows 13 seasons, but he pitched for like 20 or 20. I mean, he was in his 40s when he retired. He may have played for like almost 25 years in Major League Baseball. So ain't nobody touching his records. I mean, 
I don't know, uh, not with pitch counts and everything these days. Uh, Anthony Rizzo for the Cubs. Roberto Clemente for the Pirates. Check him out. 312, 317 career batting average. Career batting average. That is insane. This guy was one of the best hitters, the pure hitters of all time. Look at the home runs, 240. It's not a 400 that's, you know, like that kind of gets you in the Hall of Fame kind of number of power. But, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot of home runs, 240 still. With the 317 career batting average, I mean, 1,300 RBIs, 1,400 runs. Again, I don't know how many seasons he played. But, uh, you know, just one of the great all-time players. Plus, um, always working on uh, helping out the community. Um, so, you know, I mean, just uh, the kind of player that every team wants. Uh, you know, it gets done on the field, it gets done off the field. Everybody loves him. Johnny Bench, Reds. Let's take a look at Johnny Bench. 267 career batting average. Now, that's great for a catcher. Uh, 389 home runs. I mean, this guy was a power. Uh, a tour to force of the plate. 1,300 RBIs, uh, 1,000 runs. I mean, look at the at-bats. Uh, I'm assuming he, uh, back then they probably caught almost all the time because they didn't really care about people's bodies back then. And you see the, 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 the major drop-off at the end of his career. He still gets 24 home runs in a season with only 360 at-bats, so you can tell that the, the knees are starting to give out. Um, he played in the National League, so they didn't have a uh, DH rule. So he had to catch in those games, or maybe, maybe sometimes switch to first base, but... Man, um, you must just imagine the career you'd have if you played a different position. Uh, Rainbow Foils, we got Javier Baez, Danny Mendick for the Sox, Josh Bell, uh, Sean Doolittle, and Mike Clevenger. No point in going over those too much. They're just basically the same as the base cards, just that they're done with the, um, the nice Rainbow Foil on them. All right, so we'll just set those aside there. And pretty much the same deal here with these gold foils. They're just base cards with a special uh, um, border on them. But we did get Future Star, Brennan McKay. And they're a little bit more rare, obviously, so they're worth a little bit more than a base card. Kenta Mieta, Shane Bieber, so this could be a good one here. Uh, Omar, no, whatever. And then Terry Tyler Chatwood. So outside of that, uh, outside of the Shane Bieber, I don't think we have anything too special. Uh, to worry about in these ones, uh, but the Shane Bieber could be worth something again. It's just, it's just the exclusivity of the gold and the rainbow over the other cards, and all the rest are base cards. So I may or may not do a video, a separate video for the base cards at some point, um, just to kind of go go through, like show off that the World Series and all the rookie cards and all this and that kind of stuff. But uh, keep an eye out. We'll see. I'll, I'll put I'll put some stuff. Uh, whatever videos I do make, I'll put up on this playlist. So. Uh, just keep on checking back over the next 24 hours. Um, today's February the 10th. Uh, I'll have everything posted by the 11th. I'll have this video posted today. Uh, and any of the videos I've done do will be posted by the 11th. So that's it. Thanks for watching.